<laughs> so this is the shagger, and this is no, no, no it's not shagger. the shagger. <laughs> <laughs> I want no, one's, no one's online. It's fine. No one's online. I wanted right. to call it shagger, but I wasn't allowed. It's the shaggy, and it's my interpretation of the classic. 70s shag which i believe is going to make a big comeback so this is the finished look have a little look around that look so it's a combination of the least stafford education one length below the one the long disconnection and an exaggerated one length above fringe so it's got three least stafford education classic level two and level three uh, recipes mashed up together. So that's the finished look. Uh, give us some likes and some wows if you like it and you think it's wow and share it with anyone else that you think might be interested in doing this haircut. It's probably one of the most commercial haircuts that I've done to date so that um, you know, you'll be able to use this one on a, on a weekly basis. So now let me introduce the gang that we've got in tonight. Uh, and they are from Chichester College. Chichester College was one of our first Lee Stafford Education partners. They're an outstanding college with an outstanding hair department. We've been working with them now for nearly five years, is it guys? Four years. Four years, coming up to five is it? Or is it five years next year? Five years next year. Five years next year, so there you go. Nearly five years, but four <laughs> years at the moment. So first of all, this is Sam. Sam is one of the trainers at Chichester College. Oh, yeah. Um, this is Julie uh, Davis. Now, Julie Davis was the head of hair when we first started, <laughs> but now she's been promoted to a hole. <laughs> is it a hole? Yes, it is. A hole. Promoted to a hole. I don't know what it is. It's kind of a college abbreviation talk. Um, and then we've got Liana. Lisa. Lisa, sorry, Lisa. And Liana. Linear. Linear. <laughs> I'm practicing that all day. <laughs> done. Uh, and we've got another Sam, who's one of the trainers at Chichester College. Two fantastic trainers. How many uh, big, uh, big tens have you got? You've got gold scissors and gold scissors. Yeah. So both of these young ladies have achieved all the Michelin star standards in all the Lee Stafford Education recipes. That was 22. Um, Is it 22 recipes? 22 altogether, yeah. 22 altogether. So they've both got gold Joel Scissors, uh, with their name engraved on it. Of course, we've got uh, AKA Karen, who's on production of tonight's <laughs> Look event. at that shirt. Hi. Look at that shirt. So we're having a bit of a shirt off today. Uh, we've also got Luke, uh, hang our on, famous hang on, hang on. I could, I could, cameraman. Uh, How can he do that? Do you want me to do it? Uh, yeah, go on. Is that, that it? Right. is that it? No, that's you. That's me, is it? Yeah. Right, so that's you. you. Let's have a little look. There we go. So can, you, so can you, so can you please tell us who is wearing the best shirt? No, it's going to be leaked. Best prize well. for the Hawaiian shirt this evening. Also, we've got a competition. Um, so the competition is we're giving away a Lee Stafford uh, goodie bag. Uh, there is going to be um, how many products did we say was going to be in that bag? Did we say six? Six Lee Stafford products in the goodie bag. And what we want you to um, tell us is how many. Lee Stafford products are on that middle shelf. So that is the competition answer. Um, type it in the comments. Type it in the comments. That's the full. And we'll let you know, oops, so we'll let you know at the end of the show who is the winner. So, okay, so let's get cracking with this haircut. So, the Shagger haircut, again, like all Lee Stafford education um, recipes, um, it's rich in pre sectioning. The pre sectioning is quite simple. Uh, let me talk it through. We've gone for a classic horseshoe shape section where we've gone from recession, recession, and it's gone through where normally our horseshoe sections, where do our horseshoe sections normally go to the back girls? I'm going to test you a bit now. Just below the crown. So it would normally come to about here. But with this section, we're going down lower. So where the occipital bone would normally be and where the sort of crown would normally be, it's just sort of in the middle of the occipital bone and the crown. So that horseshoe section is a little bit lower than normal. Uh, it's still the same mathematics that we had for all our Lee Stafford um, horseshoe sections. Whatever that distance is from that 
top of that horseshoe there to the um, hairline there. It's the same on the other side, and then the top is one and a half of that length. That's the width of the top. We find that gives you a really good marriage between the um, top of the haircut and the underneath of the haircut on most haircuts. I know there's always more than one way to skin a cat, but on most haircuts. Right. So that's the, oh, well, that's the horseshoe section. So then what we've done, so this is an important bit. So where the high point is of the head, and the high point, if you stick a comb on your head and your head's up nice and natural, and you take that away, that'll be the high point. So the high point will be about there on top of the head. So what we've done, we've gone about nearly an inch back past that um, high top of that head. And that is where our fringe has gone. Or sorry, should I say we've done a triangle pre-section. So it's gone all the way back from that recession there, all the way back to nearly an inch past the high point of the head on both sides. Now, from that high point then, we've literally gone down. If you come around this way, Luke, you'll be able to see, buddy. Yeah. Come around this way, my darling. That section then goes down to roughly where the hairline is there which separates that section and on the other side that section and then we're left with that kind of diamond shape at the back. So that is the pre-sectioning of this haircut which is the shaggy, not the shagger. So uh, <laughs> any questions on that so far girls? You all with me on that? Yeah? Okay so we're going to start this off at the fringe. So what I've done for the sake of time is I've already cut a little bit of this fringe on the underneath. So let me just show you what I've done so far. Now, when we do the, um, this fringe on our classic one length above recipe, where do we sit, girls? Where do we sit that first section? Where are our fingers sitting when we do that fringe? Just, yeah, just sort of on the bridge, you know, just, yeah, just on the bridge, so kind of sit right on the bridge there. With this section, the shaggy, we're just bringing our fingers down a little bit further. So we're just leaving that section, uh, sorry, leaving that length a little bit longer. So the way this was cut is my feet are nailed to the floor, or I'm imagining, they're not actually nailed to the floor, <laughs> I'm imagining they're nailed to the floor. Don't nail them to the floor, but wherever you do. Not, imagine they're now to the floor. So you're not going to move your feet. You move, your feet are not going to move, move at all. They're going to stay in that position. So your body is centered the whole time. Your fingers are, you're keeping them very, very square. And I'm just using the points of the scissors through the middle to begin with. Then on the side, just keeping my fingers just pointed right to the um, right of me. And then the same on that side. So I'm cutting a dead, dead square fringe. So I've done two sections there. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna work up to the point and I'm gonna do exactly the same. So literally my feet are going to be in one spot, they're not moving. If you come around just around here, mate, you can see now, I can see my, um, my guide on the underneath. And I'm literally just using my scissors at a 45 degree angle. And the reason why we're using them at a 45 degree angle is so that you still get this heavy fringe, but if you come around here, Lou, you can see that it's just slightly textured. So that's the reason why we're doing it. It takes a little bit longer than normal, because it'd be much quicker just to go like that. But then we would have a really solid, sharp fringe. And we don't really want that here. We want it to be a little bit undone, a little bit lived in. So I'm just keeping my um, fingers really, really square. And the reason why I'm doing this, and I don't know whether any of you have ever had this problem when you're cutting fringes, but I did for years. So if you did, please let me know if you had this problem where you're cutting a fringe and before you know it, it's going shorter there, so then you have to balance it up on this side, and then all of a sudden that side goes a little bit shorter than that side. Before you know it, the fringe is getting shorter and shorter and shorter, and then before you know it, your clients are doing this, going, oh my God. <laughs> um, so by keeping your fingers square the whole time, it means you just keep that balance on either side. So it's really good for keeping your balance, so you haven't got to cut a fringe shorter by trying to balance that fringe 
up. So as we get towards the crown, our sections are going to get smaller and smaller because we're going to have less hair as we get up to that point. So we're going to have more hair through the middle. But it's exactly the same procedure. Just keeping the fingers nice and square, going in at a 45 degree angle so that we keep it nice and heavy, but it's textured rather than it being nice and blunt. Now, the reason why we've got, can anyone tell me what they think is gonna to happen to this fringe? Because normally, when you're cutting a fringe, you wouldn't go past the height point. What will happen to the fringe because we have gone past that height point? What do you think, ladies? It'll come out of That is exactly right, Sam. That is a big high five. Yeah. Well done. Yeah, what it's going to do, it's going to make the fringe sit over the hair underneath it. You're going to get a slight weight line, a slight line that falls over it. So it's a, it's a certain look. You know, you get a certain kind of heavy look with it. So that's why we're doing it. I mean, the wider you have your fringe, the wider that triangle is, the more heavier it's going to be around there. But you can always take that out after by, um, by doing a little bit of texturising. But to begin with, we're just going to leave it nice and heavy, and then we can assess how we, um, how we think this fringe is laying and the heaviness to it once it's, um, once it's dried off. So this is nice and methodical to begin with. We're doing the same thing, not moving our feet, keeping our finger position in exactly the same spot, keeping our feet in exactly the same spot. And like I say, the beauty of keeping this finger position square is, if you have a little look at this now, Luke, if you come around here, you can see you just get that balance perfect straight away. You can be rest assured you get that balance perfect. Okay, so this is the last section. Nice and 45 degree. Okay, so that's the fringe done. So if you come and have a look at this now, you can see this is the finished fringe. And you, you, you will get a little bit of hair that kind of falls back a little bit. You, know, you get a nice, big, heavy fringe in there. So we haven't texturized it yet, which we've done there. Just a nice, solid, straight fringe. Okay, so now we can take these out. Now we're going to go into our classic long disconnection. So we're just going to take a tiny piece of hair, a little slither, and we're going to cut this. We're going to pull it straight out from the head, and we're going to cut it three quarters of the length of my comb. Now this is an average size comb. So learn from the wealth and pain of my mistakes. Any shorter than that, it goes a little bit spiky. So we still want to keep a little bit of sort of movement there, so to speak. So three quarters of the comb works really well. So now my feet are going to move around. This is very similar to how we cut our short, our uniform layer, sorry, where we just move our body around because we want this to be exactly the same length. We're pulling it straight out from the head. We're using our comb as a measuring stick. Three quarters of a length and we're cutting a really fine line all the way around the head, right the way to 
the front. So there's a reason why we're cutting a very, very fine line. And you'll see why this is so important rather than a normal size section. Once we get, or once we finish cutting off, should I say, all the back. So that's done on one side. And then we go around to the other side. So we've got a nice line that's going all the way around the head. Is the long disconnection a haircut that you think you commercially, 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 com commercially use in the salon or with clients? Yes. You find you use that? Yeah. 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 So this is going to be a you know a spin on the on the long disconnection that we classically teach on our level three course because it's for a very, very long haircut and the shag, uh, shaggy. Shaggy, oh my God. Shaggy. <laughs> You're going to get us thrown off Facebook. <laughs> Can't you just call it the shagger? No. It's like Mick Shagger. No, no it's a shaggy. <laughs> like the singer. So this is the last We've just got 18. This is the X-rated version of the show. Okay. So as you can see, Luke, we've got a little line that runs all the way around this haircut now. Can you see around here as well? If you come around here, you see this little, kind of even this nice little Oh yeah, if I back runs, off a bit, I can, yeah, yeah. It runs all the way around it, yeah? It's just there, yeah? Yep, yeah, that's it. So we've put the faint line in. It's gone all the way from the front, all the way to, sorry, all the way from the back to the front. So now I'm gonna put this tripod down a little bit. That is a lovely tripod, Lee. It is a lovely tripod. I love this tripod. Pivot point. Yeah, 50% <laughs> discount, actually. If you mention Lee Stafford Education, is that right, Helen? That is correct. That is that right. Is so they definitely make your work a hundred times easier. Um, when you're using mannequin heads, have a nice steady stand like that. Okay, so we're now going to go into the uh, back. So with the back, what we're going to do, we're going to take a normal vertical section down the back, normal size vertical section, and then the technique we're going to use here is called the flip. You like this one? Oh, I do, you? yeah, I remember this one. So what we do with the flip is you can see that guide that we've cut there, yeah? So my fingernails are going to look at me. So my fingernails are looking at me. I can see that guide. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip this hair over. Well, wow, hang on, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> Got to get the right. I was on the wrong side. Give me, the, give me, the, okay. give me that shot again. That was awesome. So, All right. we've got the guide there, and what we're going to do is we're going to flip it over like that. So now I've got the hair like laying like a piece of cloth or a piece of glass. There's my guide, and what I'm going to do now is I'm literally just going to connect that, and we're going to go to the end. Nice and simple like that. Now, if I cut this line in and it goes more, it digs in more to the hair like that, then it's gonna be finer on the ends. I still wanna keep quite a bit of weight on the ends. I could have kept even more weight on there by making that line even, uh, even steeper. So I bring that round now. So that's my first section cut. So we're going to put a little clip in there just to keep that out of the way. And then we forget about that. We are not going to go back to that section at all. So the great thing about this particular method I'm sharing with you now, there is no cross-checking. Once you've cut it, you've cut it and you forget about it. It's done. Because each time your guide is that guide there, and the length and where you decide you want to leave 
the weight, so to speak, or how much weight. So you can see there that that is the length there. That piece there is the length of the haircut. So if I go in like that to there, I'll keep the length, but it'll be quite sort of spidery on the ends. I want to leave it much more heavy. So there's my guide there. So I'm just cutting this like you would do a piece of cloth or a piece of glass. And again, bring it over and that's done. Clipping it, just so we don't pick it up again by accident. And because I'm right-handed, what you'll find is, is that I'll be always flipping this way. Even when I work around the other side, I'll be flipping that way. And if you're left-handed, you'll be flipping the opposite way. This technique as well is actually brilliant for hair extensions because you know normally when you do hair extensions, you know, it might be shorter on top and then you've got some longer hair that you have to blend in. Well, this is brilliant because you just pull all the hair up. This might be your short piece on the top and then you can just flip it over and you can blend them extensions in really well. And this is very, very forgiving, this is. If you do it once and you think, oh, I want to take a bit more hair off, then this is very, very forgiving. You bring it over, if you thought, oh no, I want to take a bit more weight out, you can just pick it up again, twist it over, and then just go back into it and cut more hair off. That is a good question. So would, we nor would I normally do this uh, wet or dry? Um, if we was doing the squeeze technique, which we're gonna do on these top sections, then wet's better because, wet is always better because it keeps, uh, any short pieces, it keeps that, it keeps the stick between the short pieces and the longer pieces that you blend it in. But with this particular technique, the, um, the flip, you can do it wet or dry, actually. I actually prefer to do it dry because you can really see the weight that you're leaving on the ends of the hair. Um, I mean, if it was if it was curly, then I would say you probably could, it'd be would be cost effective drying all this off straight. But with curly hair, what you can do is you can bring it over like this, make it really wet, and then you can really drag it out like that in the curl, and it, pretty, and it pretty much lays straight, and then you can easily cut it as well. So the answer to your question is, Sam, is you could do it either really. I mean, the only reason why I'm cho I'm choosing to do it dry now is for the sake of time because afterwards I'm going to want to cut quite a lot of this length off yeah. and um, and it being dry will be easier for me to do that um, and also I can really see the amount of hair that I'm leaving there easier when it's dry you know but you could do it either way so you've still, we've still got a lot of hair there you can see even though we're taking weight away all from this um, this area up the top here, we're still leaving a lot of weight um, on the bottom because we've, uh, we've gone in at quite a steep angle with the flip. So my body's right in front with the flip. I'm bringing it up, straight up, so I can see that guide. It's really important you see that guide. And then I'm literally just gonna flip my body around 180 degrees like that. There's my guide there. And I'm just connecting that. All the way down. So what we're gonna do here now, we're gonna leave a piece out that's disconnected around the front. So this front section, if you come around here, actually I might just take a couple of sections. There's the guide. And when I'm cutting this hair, I'm not actually cutting out how you would conventionally cut a haircut. So I'm not doing that. I'm not actually closing my blades like you normally would. I'm cutting it like this. Just like you would a cut, um, if you was cutting a piece of cloth or a piece of paper, right in the shank there. That's how I'm cutting it each time. Okay, so one more now, and we're done on this side. 
So what we're going to do, come around here, Blue, we're just going to leave piece out disconnected around the front now. Mm -hmm. And then again. And what's that for? Or is that like a secret for that? That is going to be, because we're going to be doing something around the front, I want to keep maximum amount of weight around the front. So that's why I'm leaving that section out because hair can be finer around that area. So by leaving that section disconnected down, we're just gonna have more weight around that area. Okay, so that's all done now, that side. So now we're gonna go to this side. A nice vertical section. Just a normal size section, not too fine, not too thick. Pulling it all the way up. You can see the guide there. And then my body is 180 degrees, flipped over. So you want to flip your fingers right the way over so your fingers are not doing this, because they do that, you can see it starts to bend that hair. It's very hard then to cut it. Your fingers want to literally go from a vertical position right over to a horizontal position. And that way then, the hair's laying very, very flat. And it's very easy for you then to work out how much, how steep you want to cut that to retain as much weight on the bottom or not. Now you might decide that you want to do a haircut and leave it quite, so it's quite tenderly on the bottom. Now it all depends what you're going for. We want to leave it quite. Can I just uh, take away for one second there? Yeah. I'm seeing lots of comments going past with, ridiculously low numbers <laughs> what uh, we're clearly talking about individual items how many right let's rephrase the question how many things are on the middle shelf well no because the products they're grouping into like how many all that oh, okay, okay. so how many individual things so we're giving away and look there's like stuff and products look, look, look. In bag. loads of things so answers like 12. And don't forget who's got the best shirt. The best <laughs> oh, they've already, they've shirt. already said you. They've really? They've already said me, actually. I'm, Did I'm they? lots of votes. Really? I'm getting lots of votes. <laughs> well, it's your wife's shirt. It's like, so she shirt. getting the votes. She can win. Yours is like a busy Izzard shirt. <laughs> <laughs> Julian Clary. <laughs> he was in South Sydney the other night. Was he? Yeah. My brother went. So you can see now as well, the reason why we did that really, like, um, what do we call it? It's a uh, slither. The reason why we did a slither and not a normal size section <laughs> is that once we've cut it, you can see there's no weight line. If we'd have taken a normal size section there, there would have been a quite a heavy weight line there still that would have had to have gone through and started to take that weight line away. And that would have taken time and time is money. So that's why we did that little slither so you haven't got to go back in and start reducing any hair. So I think I, there's about, there's only about 12 sections around the back here. So it's quite a quick haircut to do. Getting lots of love. For the yes. Lots of love on the page. Yeah, if anyone knows anyone that would benefit from this technique or the finished result, the shaggy, then please share. Yeah. 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 got it. All right. Yeah! It's a weird form of Tourette's when you can't <laughs> say that one word. We've been telling you, you mustn't say that one word. No. I know. You mustn't say it. Well, you know why? It's because I originally wanted to call it the Shagger, because it was originally called the Shag in the 70s, and I thought, Shagger just sounds more British, it's a bit more fun, isn't it? you know, but I was told I can't call it Shagger, so it's the Shaggy. It's the I feel like any reason for you not saying it has gone right out of the window now, though, mate. Might as well just call it the Shagger. <laughs> no, it's not the Shagger, it's the Shaggy. It's the Shaggy. I'm outraged. <laughs> uh. right. so yeah, we're getting lots of guesses on the thing. So yeah, realistic ones out. now. Not many questions, though, from chat. So please. Um, any questions, guys? About this technique, I know the flip, a lot of people like see it and it looks amazing, but I'm not sure if people truly understand the flip. 
I mean, do you find that ladies at the college? Yeah. Okay, I feel like we should film after this is done a slow mo. <laughs> yeah. A slow mo of the flip because yeah. even I don't feel like I've seen it properly well, and I'm here. You know what? It's one of those things that you only do it three or four times and you just sort of get your body down and, and you've got it. It's actually not that difficult to do once you've had a go at it. So we do it again, like I'm standing right in front of this hair. I'm picking it up, and my main, my main point to begin with is all about getting that guide. That's what it's all about, lifting it up so I can see that guide. My fingernails have got to look at me. Leave plenty of guide there, because if you go right up to the guide, and then you flip it, you lose your guide. So you need to leave like a good inch of guide there, yeah? Because then all I'm gonna do, if you look at my body, all I'm doing is I'm literally doing that. So I'm turning everything 180 degrees <laughs> before I No, actually, actually, do that again. I've got you in the mirror and this. Is this is right? perfect, this is, right? good. this is the one. Okay. And do it slow-mo. Slow-mo, so it's... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> uh... There you go, yeah, you got it? Yep. Jessica Jane Stafford? Yeah. Would this haircut suit her? Would this yeah. haircut suit her? We'd like suit? to know what you're up well, to. Well, the thing is, is that there's not a lot of things that wouldn't suit my wife, because she's so beautiful. Oh, yeah. Good, yeah. good, yeah. that's the right Am answer. I redeemed yeah. myself from earlier, Jess. <laughs> I redeemed myself. Um, <coughs> I think this would look great on Jess. I could see Jess. I mean, the thing is, this is quite a nice haircut, because so many girls are wearing their hair long now. This is quite a nice, and probably getting very bored with it on the whole, this is quite a nice um, sort of haircut to go to because it's still, you know, it's still long, you still feel like you've got a lot of hair, but, um, but it'll be obviously a massive change. So yeah, I think it'd be great on your chest. When do you want it done? <laughs> so now, Luke, we're gonna leave that disconnected piece around the front again. So that is on a tri uh, on a uh, diagonal. Take the diagonal section to leave that piece out there. So it's all very, very systematic around the back. You know, we're doing the same thing all the way around. My body is flipping in the same direction. I'm always flipping clockwise. And it would be the same if you was um, left-handed, would you put clockwise or anti-clockwise? But you'd be going the other way around. Your body would be facing that way. Okay, so that is all done on the underneath. So I think before I move on to the top, I'm just going to cut the length in. Uh, Lee, you've got a vote from Martin Holmes. He says he's uh, loving your shirt. Thanks, so. Martin. <laughs> Love you, mate. I think Martin's a bit partial to her. Oh, he's um, that. Yeah. I bet he has. He's partial <laughs> he to a Hawaiian shirt. Yeah, right, yeah. now let's get this up. Is that? Lee, would you mind just doing us a quick recap of the, the whole look for sure. those that have just joined us late? Okay, so for those of you that have just joined us late... Maybe show the final look. The haircut we're doing here is the shaggy. That is the final look. So it's a very, very salon client friendly look very modern isn't it it's very very now isn't it i think so i think it's gonna make a big resurgence the old shaggy what do you think ladies how many in our audience would wear that yeah yeah there you go we've got thumbs up from all the girls 100 yeah 100 percent yeah, okay so what we've done so far with this haircut. The sectioning pattern was a horseshoe section, recession, recession, it went back and it, it went deeper than our normal horseshoe sections. Normally, our horseshoe sections go just under the crown. This one has gone, where the occipital bone is, where the crown is, it's gone in the middle of that, so it's, a, it's lower. On the top, what we've done, where the high point would normally be, our triangle section has gone about an, inch or nearly an inch past that, so past the high point. And then from that section there, we've taken a section either way, which has given us these three sections on top. 
Um, I started with the oops, I started with the fringe first. And all we've done around the fringe is just cut a square line. It's longer than we'd normally cut our uh, fringe on the one length below, where we'd set our fingers right in at the, um, at the, what do you call that again? Bridge. Bridge! Yeah, it's got a little bit lower than that, so it's a little bit longer. We've just brought all that down, cut a square line there. Um, on the underneath, we've taken a slither section, so we've taken a short section that's gone all the way to the front, that's a third of my cone, and then we've done a flip to connect it. So it is connected, but a very, very steep angle. So now we're going to cut the length in. So just to make this nice and quick, I'm going to use the clippers. So you could, you could cut this any length now. I mean, literally. Yeah, someone did ask that. Uh, would this work on somebody with waist length hair? I think it looked amazing on waist length Yeah, I think this would work on any length. I don't want to leave this too long, this one. I, I mean, I, I don't want to, I don't want it to be short, but I don't want it to be um, too long. I want it to be below the shoulders, but you could cut this any length, all depending on what your client wanted. Um, so I'm just going to get these sides out of the way to begin with. So I just want to cut a square line around the back. Get that out of the way for a second. So the nice thing about using the clippers is, is you can just wash it off nice and quick. So I've already cut the line around the back there. So I'm just going to kind of sketch it in to begin with. Just sketching it in to begin with, that line. Just keeping it nice and square to begin with. I'm not worried about going right the way through that hair at the moment. I'm just, just sketching in the, the line. So I'm just gonna keep this all square, so I don't wanna move my body. I was tempted to move my body around then, which is gonna make the line more rounded. I wanna keep it nice and square to begin with, so I really wanna keep my body nice and square on, and my comb square as well. Right, so I'm pretty happy with that length. So before I even worry about polishing it up, I'm just gonna take these clips out. I'm gonna go around the side as well. So I'm just gonna follow that all the way around now, nice and quick. I'm trying to keep my eye line in line with this line. If your eye line's up here, it's gonna be much harder to see this line. Your eye line wants to be in line with it. So once we've done that square line at the back, I've then brought my body right to the side and just literally followed that line all the way round. And all I'm doing about is just sketching it in. Not worried too much at the moment about I've got that in the way there, but I've moved that out of the way. That's getting in the way a little bit. So my body's going right to the side again, following that square line all the way through. Make sure we've got the balance there. And then we can sort of go through and start to take off what's underneath it and get it nice and polished. It's a question from chat. Yeah. Why are you using clippers to do this? The reason why I'm using clippers on this is because it's nice and quick and it's, it's nice and effective. I and mean, we don't teach this in our academies, but we do actually. We teach it um, a similar kind of uh, a similar kind of technique with the uh, one length above. But the difference being is that we have the hair nice and we have it blow dried off and straight. But um, it's just quick and easy. The 
you ever use clippers when you're doing this? You do, yeah? Yeah. I think you finish the clip Yeah, that's it. Oh look, my shirt looks great on the screen, mate. You sure? Yeah, I've just seen myself. It's amazing. Uh, mate, I've been watching, I've seen more compliments for Lee. No, I'm really? Really? Me. I haven't got a single look in. Aaron's but then shirt. no one's seen me, so. Definitely. That's right, you're not really in front of the camera. <laughs> no. are you? Definitely the best. Who's this? Uh, I'm just commenting on the thread that my shirt wins. Right, <laughs> 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 well, so we're just polishing this line off. Obviously, we could spend a fair bit of time polishing this, but to be quite honest here, oops, that's in the way again. But to be quite honest here, this is gonna, we're gonna texturize the bottom line anyway. So even though we wanna get the balance right, we wanna get an element of um, it being very one length, we're gonna go in and texturize it at the end. Okay, I'll come back to that at the end. We've got the length in. So now we're gonna go, into these sections on top. So we'll start off on this back section. So we're going to split this back section into two now. Get that clip in there. And we're going to pull this up. We're going to use this, which is the longest part of the fringe. We're going to use that as our guide now. Now we're going to use a technique that we call the squeeze. We pull that all the way up to the ceiling now. And now this one is better to have wet because when you have it wet, you get a stick with the shorter section. And now this is the squeeze. What's funny, ladies? What are you laughing today? What are you laughing at? So now what we've got here, we've got a lot of disconnection. We've got them short pieces on the underneath and we've got all this hair that's falling over the top now, so there's a lot of disconnection on that piece. <laughs> Share it with us. Know, What's I'm going on? That's because you saw the sign on the door. Everyone's got that. It's like a Japanese house, isn't it? <laughs> So we're going right the way to the end. We don't want to leave a lot of bulk on the end of that. Not like we did when we was cutting the underneath. So we've got a lot of disconnection there. And then we're going to go on to these sections here. Oh, Lee, I've got, I've got, sorry, I've got to interrupt you. Go on. Um, somebody using... called Jane Clement is in the chat. And Hello, Jane. Asking, would this haircut be good on curly hair, hair like hers? Um, that, right, that's a good question. I think it would be brilliant. I think you just have to be um, aware of the fringe and how short you cut, you cut that. But um, yeah, I think it would work absolutely fine on curly. I think it would look great on curly hair. I mean, the, the reason why I think it would work really good on curly hair is because we are leaving um, some very long sections on top. So it won't end up looking like Kevin Keegan for any people out there <laughs> can remember. Have you ever done your mother-in-law's hair, Lee? Uh, that's a good question. Have I ever cut your hair, Jane? I don't, I'm not sure if I have. I mean, I haven't done mine. You haven't? <laughs> no. You won't let me near it. She won't? Why? No, I don't know. I don't know. That's the thing. Well, it's oh, not my like mother. You come over here. Not, it's <laughs> not Again, my we're using sign. That oh, section there, which is the longest section of the of the fringe, <laughs> and combing it through with the other, combing it right the way up to the ceiling. And again, you can see that that guide there. So when we cut that, and we're cutting it again like that, we're using the shank of the scissor, like we would cut a piece of paper or a piece of cloth. We're not closing it like that. So again, we're getting a lot of disconnection. 
that's falling over this short piece through there. So now what we want to do is just go round and cut this overhang off. So we keep, we're keeping it quite, as you can see, we're keeping it very um, solid on the bottom. It's a very, very kind of solid look for now. Just getting rid of these. So we're having a competition today for at least that a goodie bag. Uh, eight products we're giving away. And you've just got to <laughs> tell us how many Lee Stafford products individually, not different families, are on that middle shelf. Quick run for everyone there. Whoa. As this is drying off now around here, Luke, you can see what I meant by that fringe. If you come around here, Bo, yeah. on this side, can you see how that, just around here, mate, can you see how that fringe just starts to fall over a little bit? Yeah, yeah. And that's what happens when you go further back than the uh, high point. You get this sort of like overhang with the fringe. Sorry for my ignorance, but they norm normally end like that, wouldn't they? They sort of end there, yeah. yeah. So it's just going back a little bit. It's making the fringe a little bit wider. <laughs> just going around, just taking off these bits, just blending it in. And then would you leave them like that or do you go around and sort of trim them a little bit and texturize yeah, I mean, them? You know, if I was doing this um, and I had endless time, I'd go, I'd go around and just really make sure that was sort of raised up. Um, it might even be a little bit shorter on that side, actually. But, um, May I ask a question? Yeah. Do you have any kind of... Uh, principle when it comes to the width of the fringe, like how far around the forehead to go. Come again. Does that make sense in terms mm -hmm. of like the width of the fringe, like how far, like do you take the fringe all the way back to the ear? Do you stay within like a, where the eyes are? I mean, is there any, like in terms of the width? Yeah, I mean, around? I mean really, if you come around here, Luke, I mean, you know, if you was cutting a short fringe around here, you could go back as far as you want, right into the hairline, really. Um, yeah, so the, you could take a fringe as wide as you want, really, without it going... Oops. I don't know if that's got your... How far can you take that yeah, back? Yeah, like, because obviously sometimes you can open the face up maybe too wide, can't yeah. you, if you go really far around to Yeah, the... I think it all depends on the, the face shape again, doesn't it? Yeah. And the client, you know, sometimes it's really nice exposed to someone's face. Yeah. And sometimes people like to be closed up a little bit, yeah, don't they, you know, sure. so... Okay, so we've done all of that now. Now we need to do a little something around the front. Because if you notice round here on this finished look, we have got a lot of graduation around the front there. If you look at this one, it's pretty much one length around the front. <laughs> so what we're gonna do now, we're gonna, we're just gonna do some graduation around there. So we're gonna take the back out of the way. So we're just dealing with the sides. And on this side, we're gonna do the flop. So we bring it all the way down. We're not, we're not pulling it forward and we're not pulling it back. We're letting it kind of fall natural. And we're pulling that down to about the lip. I mean, again, you can, you can do any length you want here, but I'm gonna pick the lip, the lip. And I, and I don't want to cut it any further back than that, because that's the length of the side. So literally, the nice thing about, this is the flop, this technique. And this is a great way to layer hair around the, fray, the face, no matter what length you start at. It could be the chin here, could be higher. I mean, you just get that graduation absolutely perfect in one go. 
Uh, and then we're going to work on the other side, but you can only flop one way, you can only flip one way. Because I flop that side, I'm going to have to flip on this side. So again, I'll bring it down, bring it to the lips there, flip it around, and again, just cut a nice straight line. And then bring that around. And again, you've got that perfect graduation. A little bit of work maybe there to do, just a little bit, but basically it's bang on straight away. And that will give you that nice kind of graduation around the front there. I was gonna say it was bang on, but so, so on this side, when you're doing the flip, yeah. or the flop, sorry, yeah. um, you were going from the lip, but yeah. on this side, because of where you think, because of when you do the flop, yeah. does that add extra length or? A little bit. So you just, I mean, you just need to be, you can see I've got that, that right there, haven't I? Yeah. So what you need to do is you just be aware that when you flip it, you will, it will rise up a little bit. So what I would say is when you're doing the, the other side, the flip side, leave it yeah. a bit longer to begin with. Gotcha. Just to play safe. So around the back here now, So now we just wanna, and this is where it's good to cut it when it's dry. We just wanna break this up a little bit now. So it's nice and heavy, but where I cut it with the clippers and it was very blunt, we now just wanna break that up a little bit, make it a bit more lived in. And we'll do that all the way around this bottom length. And what you'd do, you'd carry on doing that all the way around, just to, just to break up that really sharp vibe. We still want it one length, as you can see it here. We still want to keep that one length feeling. We just want to make it a little bit more lifted. And then the same with the fringe as well. I would do this when it was dried off usually. I'd put it down there, and I'd start cutting into this as well. Better to do that dry, so you can really see how that fringe uh, is developing as far as that textured fringe. If you come around here, look, look, you see that we've, we've just gone in so that, you know, we've taken away that really sharp or that heavy line in the end, just by literally putting our fingers in and just, and just keep looking at it until you're really happy with it. Done the same around the bottom there. Also, what we've done on the top there, if you have a look here, Lou, just, just, a, just a fringe section, we've just pulled it up, and again, we've just kind of gone into it, just to loosen it up and make it a bit lifting, because we pulled it all this way and cut quite a heavy line, the whole thing's quite heavy. So just pull it up. And then that's it, the cut is done there. Absolutely done. So get this one out of the way. <laughs> Just seen that, yeah. It's hard. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. I can't reach. <laughs> so this is the finished look. It's exactly the same length as I've cut that one. Obviously this one has been coloured. Uh, we did this, I think Adam Brown did this for one of the shows that we did. Um, and so you can see around the back here, you know, it's, we've got, it, it feels quite one length because of the way that it's been cut, but we've got a lot of disconnection under there as well. So it feels quite heavy and quite one length, but it's not. You've got all that disconnection there, which breaks it up and takes away some of that heaviness, which makes it look modern, but in a very, very understated way. So that is the finished look there you go. of the Shaggy. Um, so give it a Yay. spin. Yay. Yay. Woo. Yeah. What are we thinking, guys? Send us the likes and loves and all of that. We've got a little bit of an admin to do before everyone rushes off as well. Uh, you want to put a shout out to all those people, students, colleges yes, we just that had, entered the LSE right. Hairdresser of the Year We awards. just had the Lee Stafford Education uh, uh, annual competition held at the Red King Studios in Hammersmith, where all our colleges, they brought all their winning 
students in the house or in college to Hammersmith to compete against all the other winning students from every other from every other college. Chichester still were there. You had, a, you had a good result, didn't you? Very successful. Yeah. Student of the year, one of their students. What was her name again? Taylor. Taylor, she done it fantastically. It was very, very simple. It was like a one length below, wasn't it? It kind of, it was quite sort of lazy around here. It had lovely yeah. texture on the end. It had a beautiful yeah. way to it. It really did look classy. It was very, very well educated. There was another girl there. Her name was um, Jade, who did the one with the big bows, yeah. which I yeah. thought looked fabulous as well. And there was so much really great work this year. The standard was really went through yeah, the roof, yeah, don't you think? Yeah. Um, and it was interesting because the judges were torn between the bow one and, and they were very different. One was sort of understated and one was very in your face, wasn't it? You know, but the understated one and that young lady was from Chichester. So a shout out to all the students that won or or came to Hammersmith. They were all winners because to be there, they had to win their um, categories in-house. Yeah. Um, yeah. at the college, didn't they? So they all done fantastic, it was a great day. Um, also, if you're thinking of getting involved uh, in a hairdressing career, then we have academies all over the country. We've got them at South Tideside, Hull, Scunthorpe, Doncaster, Stoke, Hells Owen, Newton, Abingdon, Bracken, Neath, uh, Redbridge, Whitney, Dartford, Gravesend, Bournemouth and Chichester! So if you're interested in a career in hairdressing and it is an amazing career, then contact one of our partner colleges. Um, or they can always send us a message. Or, or you can, can send us a message, up. yeah, no problem. We've got the um, Lee Stafford Education website and Facebook page. So you can you can get in touch with us a number of ways and we can pass your inquiries on. So what was, Luke, you actually... Um, yeah. Them earlier. How many? I don't products? think anyone got it. I don't think anyone got it. Who, uh, the well, nearest, the nearest, left to the nearest. Okay, yeah. How many was it? Two hundred and four. Two hundred and four. Okay. Right. Okay. So two hundred four win, wins a or the nearest one to two hundred four. Two hundred four. Sorry, will win at least stack a goodie bag of eight products. Um, so any other housekeeping? Um, not really, just um, the sad news that this is going to be the last one of the summer and we're going to be back in September. We're going to be back in September, so that's in two months time? Yeah. Two exactly months right. time. So Have a great summer everyone. First Sunday um, in the month of... September. September, you just said that didn't you? Yes, yeah, so just need to thank all the girls from Chichester. It took you quite a few hours to get here today, didn't you, on the <laughs> Sunday uh, it travel. Like it, it so, uh, yeah, really appreciate you coming down. Thank you very, very much, girls. Great to see you. Uh, thanks to Karen of production again. Uh, best shirt. Best shirt. Yeah. Definitely this one. Uh, <laughs> and of course, Luke on camera. Yeah. yeah. Thanks, Luke. As we're always, gonna, we'll put a poll up. We'll sort this out properly. After the show, we're going to put a poll up. Hey, hold on. I feel like we'll pull, right. it, pull this that still. Is, that is his wife's shirt. It doesn't look right, does it? Just to fit everything's wrong, isn't it? But anyway, I'll leave you to decide, yeah? Uh, yeah, so guys, enjoy it the rest of your Sunday. Uh, and uh, Enjoy the summer. We'll enjoy see the you summer. In September. And we'll see you uh, in September. See you later. Bye! Bye. Bye.